It's time for Orchard Skills. As we've been discovering, Blazor is an exciting new client-side UI framework from the ASP.NET team. Its big selling point is the ability to write rich web UI experiences using HTML, CSS, and C Sharp instead of JavaScript, something a lot of developers have been dreaming about. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be interfacing with one of Orchard Core's most popular APIs through Blazor WebAssembly, the ability to query your content through the REST API graphical interface. Please stay with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. If you ever used Orchard Core, I'm sure used graphical user interface in the admin dashboard. So let's go there. Click on configuration, graphical, and you'll notice on the left, they have the explorer. So we can go ahead and click on blog post, click on display text, subtitle, author, created UTC, and also markdown. And if we click the play button up here, you can see we get the data corresponding to what we selected. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could query this exact same information in a Blazor WebAssembly application? Well, we can. So let's get started. Instead of starting out from scratch, let's use the previous Blazor WebAssembly application we first created. If you're not familiar with the application, please check out the video titled Blazor WebAssembly Integrated with Orchard Core CMS. Launch your favorite browser and browse to github.com slash orchardskills slash orchardskills.orchardcore.blazorwasm. Let's click on the green code button and select open with GitHub desktop. Click on the open GitHub desktop.exe button and let's click on the clone button and there we go we have the repository cloned let's launch visual studio and load the solution we clone from the orchard skills github repository one of the advantages of Blazor WebAssembly, it has a, a component architecture just like many of the other node.js frameworks such as angular so let's get started and create our very first Blazor WebAssembly component. We will call this component HTTP request tester. Let's go ahead and create a component directory. Right click on the solution, add new folder, and let's call it components. Rename components. Okay, let's right click on components and add new item. And let's add a Razor component. And like we said, let's go ahead and call it HTTP request tester dot Razor. Go ahead and add that. Okay. There's our first component. Okay. So one of the first things you see is navigation manager. So the navigation manager, URI and navigation state helpers. We can go to the website here. Navigation manager provides the event and methods shown in the following table, URI, get the current absolute URI, base URI gets the base URI, navigate to, navigates to the specific URI, location change, an event that fires when the navigation location is changed to absolute URI and to base relative path. So this allows us to utilize the URI that you'll, you'll notice down here later. So first we set up our rest methods such as, which can be get, post, push, and delete. And that's in this section here. Then we set up an edit control to modify the body of the HTML request. Next, we set up the URI so we can put the, the URL inside of where we query the REST API. Then we set up the edit control to modify the body of the HTML request. Next, we provide a way to enter in multiple request headers, allowing a user to add and delete request header items. We have a send button. And finally, we have the results, sponsor body, and headers. And at the bottom, we have the code that processes it all. So we have the actual HTTP request message and adding the request headers here. Then we have our exception handling, and then we have an add header and remove header methods down here. And then we have a getter and setters for the name and value. And that's it. That's basically all the component consists of just entering the information to do an HTTP request. So next let's go into our pages. Let's rename it to call web API. Okay. Say yes. And for the code here, let's say page slash call web API. And then we'll do a div class container. And then we'll have a H2 call web API. And then we'll call our component, which is HTTP request tester. Okay. 
Okay, one last thing we need to do is go to our import.razor file. And what we want to do is add the components there. Go down to the programs file here. And instead of counter, let's change this to my call web API. And we want to call this call web API. And down here in our index.html, we want to do my call web API, put a loading inside and finish the tag with my call web API. And that's it. Okay, let's now run the application. So first thing we want to do, currently it's in IIS Express, and we want to go ahead and select the Orchard Skills, Orchard Core, that Orchard CMS, so we can go to um, 5001 for a port. And so let's go ahead and hit the green little play triangle button. Okay, great, we get the Orchard Core setup page, and let's go ahead and enter our site name, and let's go ahead and select the blog recipe, and let's use SQLite for our database, and let's go ahead and enter our credentials, and then hit the Finish Setup button. Okay, great, so we've got our Call Web API screen here. But first, we need to go ahead and set up Orchard Core here, and let's go ahead and do a slash admin, login, and we want to go down to our configuration into our features and we want to enable GraphQL. Okay. Another thing we want to do is go into settings here, into security, and then into roles, and then into, we'll go ahead and edit anonymous. And let's go ahead and search for GraphQL. And then we're going to go ahead and allow anonymous here for execute GraphQL. Now, some people think this may be a security issue. Yes, I agree. Um, but I just want to show the basic concepts of doing a REST API in Blazor WebAssembly. And we will do a more elaborate security video and talk about all the security issues regarding this along with tokens and that. So, but for now, let's just go ahead and do it simple so we can understand the basic concepts. So I'm going to hit save and then I'm going to go into our application and everything's all filled in. We're going to do a post method and our URL is at localhost 5001 slash API slash GraphQL and we're going to query our blog post and then our response headers are content type and our value is application slash GraphQL. And so let's go ahead and hit the send button. And there you go. Using a Blazor WebAssembly application and utilizing Orchard Core's API slash GraphQL, we were able to get the blog post for the blog theme. Isn't that awesome? That's great. Okay. To recap, we cloned the Blazor WebAssembly integrated with Orchard Core CMS web application, created a new Blazor Razor component called HTTP request test, and then renamed the counter Razor page to call web API Razor page. In the Orchard Core setup page, we entered our site name, selected the blog recipe, selected SQLite for our database, and entered in our credentials. We then configured Orchard Core by adding the GraphQL feature and modified the anonymous role to be able to execute the GraphQL functionality. We then went back to the Blazor Web Assembly application and executed an API slash GraphQL REST call, retrieving the blog posts. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.